Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's been great. Well, <coughs> we've been meeting, I, I know most of you, but uh, some of you I haven't really met before. And uh, what we've been doing uh, monthly is actually gathering people, holistic healers, people interested in healing and abundance, and uh, trying to create uh, a network where um, everybody can benefit. And uh, we're also um, working on uh, new avenues of, of healing. And uh, we're privileged to have with us tonight um, Daryl Brand, who's actually been uh, working <coughs> with, uh, I guess, the uh, music of the spheres. He, he, was, he was trained as a classical uh, musician. And uh, he's actually come up with uh, the harmonics of healing, which he will explain to you uh, tonight. And uh, so I hope everyone has a great experience, and I'm sure they will. And he'll answer any questions that you have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. Yeah, so thank you everyone for coming out tonight. Uh, what I'm going to be speaking about tonight will be the harmonics of healing. I've developed a what I believe will replace the allopathic medical system. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about what illness is. We, we, we really haven't been taught what illness really is, I don't think. We, we've kind of gone off on this route and we've lost total track of what uh, we're really dealing with. <coughs> um, and I'll talk about some of the extensions that I've run into working with this, working with the harmonics. The harmonics are, are conscious in and of themselves. Um, they're the harmonics of the unified field, which I'll talk about in a little bit um, later. And <clears throat> they have consciousness in and of themselves, and they, they will teach me or whoever is working with them uh, about nature, basically, because nature is our ultimate teacher. And the extension of this, I would, uh, what I found is that it's got me to a point of being pretty close to being a breatharian, which most of you probably don't, I don't need to go into telling you that we're in a lot of trouble with our food. You know, the oceans are almost fished out, and <clears throat> uh, the food supply is, is tainted and poisoned on just about all levels. And sun gazing will get you to a point of being able to be a breatharian so that you don't need to eat. Or the harmonics will start you moving in that direction and also be talking about some sun gazing, which will, will uh, uh, hasten that process. Because the sun also is a real major teacher. It's like that's where all our information comes from and that's the evolutionary force on the planet. Um, and when you start to sun gaze, and by this I mean you're looking directly into the sun, you're actually getting the light energy, that information directly from the sun uh, before it, it, the normal process is that the sun goes into new areas of the universe and the light on the sun becomes programmed and then it streams down into the planet. So we have a picture of the uh, planet, sort of like a pie-shaped planet. You know, the sun in the middle, and everybody's seen the pictures of the planets around there. That's not right at all. What goes on three-dimensionally is that the sun is blasting through the universe like a, you know, a million miles a second or something of this sort, and it's towing the planets behind it, sort of like in its wake. Mm -hmm. And so what happens as the sun goes into these new areas of the universe, it programs its light with the new energy that it comes into contact with. And then what happens <clears throat> is it comes into the earth, the plants pick up that evolutionary force, the animals eat the force, and then the people eat the animals, and so we're getting the evolutionary force way down here. What happens when you start the sun gaze, you get the evolutionary force right up here, and you're sort of on the cutting edge of it, one of which would be becoming a breatharian. And you'll develop all your spiritual uh, abilities from that because the sun is <clears throat> the sun is a portal to the fifth dimension is what it is we we've lost total track of that but sort of what a, a way to look at the sun <clears throat> is that 
we're sitting in a dark room and there's a doorway there and somebody turns a light on in the room on the other side of the door and the light sort of shines into the darkness. Well, that's sort of what the sun is. We're like down in the dark down here, sort of, and the light coming from the sun is actually the light from the fifth dimension shining down on us. Okay? And so when you start to sun gaze, you start to develop fifth dimensional qualities about it. And I'll talk more about that as we're, we're going along. I'll talk about that and sort of the normal extension of this which really gets out there is that you become uh, physical immortality. Because I think this work that I'm going to talk about really has the potential of clearing up all illnesses. I think you're not doing your job. Yeah, that's okay, actually. It's hard to look at it. It's moving the other one. Yeah, it's actually really bothering my eyes. Shelly doesn't like to get the shut it down. She's <laughs> 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 starting a campaign. Down. It's distracting us from looking at you. We've got to watch out for it. Control it. Uh, just have to okay. I'll just look down. Um, yeah, the normal extension of this is uh, physical immortality. Because usually we die from illnesses and diseases, and if you clear up all the illnesses and diseases, it's like you're, you're not going to die, or at least you will live a very, very long time. Okay? Um, and th that's the normal extension of this. So also what I'm going to do is, from this picture, this is the current uh, view of, uh, from a string theory point of view, of what the universe looks like to us. Um, let me stand over on this side so that do the camera. No, it's not you. So this would be like physical reality up on the very top of this. This is sort of like the crust of, uh, of, of reality. It's like floating on this vast. All this below is an energetic sea. It's a quantum wave going down here. And just at the very crust of that is this stuff we call physical reality. And as soon as you fall below that crust, you just fall into more and more refined fields of, of energy flowing down into the um, uh, molecules and atoms and uh, nuclear and, and subnucleic. And <clears throat> as you keep going down, these fields become more and more refined. They become more and more sublime until you get to what's called the unified field. Which is just below here. Let's see. This is this is marked the unified field. It didn't come out here, but this is the unified field, and this is what Einstein was searching for his whole life, as well as what all the quantum physicists and all the string theorists have been searching for. Well, that has been uncovered now. They've got the, the mathematical formula of what the unified field is. And the unified field can go by many names. You can call it source, you can call it God, you can call it whatever. But this is like the fountainhead for all the laws of all these different levels going up here. Like they all come from this unified field. And um, what happens, they've figured out, they've, they've isolated this unified field and have found out that there's 192 fundamental frequencies that make up this unified field. It's uh, sort of like if you take a guitar and you, you hit a guitar and there's all those notes kind of squashed together, but if you keep hitting it for a little bit and you keep listening to it, eventually you'd be able to pick out the E and the A and the D. Well, that's what they've done here. and. They've, they've figured this out from both a string theory point of view as well as a quantum physics point of view. And <clears throat> how this came about, um, for me, I was reading the Vedas. It was a very, very interesting concept here that the Vedas... Let me just slide over a little bit and I can show you. The Vedas talk about 192 fundamental frequencies of consciousness. Let's, let me see. There we go. 
And I was reading the Vedas, and along the Vedas, they, they came up with saying that there's 192 fundamental frequencies of consciousness. That basically they, the rishis went into themselves here, and this is a representation of that, and they came down and down and down into their own being until they got to pure consciousness or the unified field also. And as I was reading that, it was saying, you know, there's 192 fundamental frequencies. And a little bit later, I was studying quantum physics and string theory, and they come up with the same number, 192 fundamental in case of uh, quantum physics, they were talking about uh, fundamental particles, and then when it changed to string theory, they started talking about that these particles are actually vibrations, okay? and that they, there are 192 fundamental vibrations that make up string theory, which actually come together to form all of reality. So basically from the same field, we have consciousness emerging, as well as physical reality emerging. They're one and the same. The frequencies are one and the same. And so when I started seeing that, I said, geez, you know, 192, what's the chances of you know, this fundamental theories of everything, which is what these things are, what would be the chance of them coming up with the same number of 192? And it's, it's such a specific number. I mean, we're not saying, you know, there's a couple thousand or a few hundred or averages, you know, 192 is a very, very specific number. It comes after 191 and before 193. And, and so, as I was looking at this, I'm saying, geez, you know, this is, this is, it's got to be the same number. It can't possibly, you know, two, two, three fundamental theories of everything can't come up with the same number like that of frequencies. And so, <clears throat> actually a friend of mine comes down from northern Vermont comes down from northern Vermont to get out of the winter in northern Vermont and comes to Buffalo in January. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously he's never seen he's never seen the weather channel in his life, right? <laughs> so he's coming down and this guy he's the talker. He talks like crazy all all day long he talks. And so we're out having a cup of coffee and he's jabbering away at, you know like this and I was I was working on this concept and you know, figuring out, geez, if I could figure out 192 fundamental frequencies, that would have a real major, you know, this would be a whole really neat healing tool, right? You got your, this is subjective consciousness, you know, your thought processes here, and this is physical reality, actually the makeup of the brain, the whole body. And there, it's all coming from here, and if you could figure out the 192 frequencies, you would have both of these things. And so, we're sitting in a coffee shop, having a cup of coffee, and he's jabbering away at me, and I turn to him and I say, I'm trying to figure out 192 fundamental frequencies of consciousness. Will you be quiet for about 10 minutes so I can think? <laughs> <laughs> he quiets down, and that's how long it took me. It took me like 10 minutes. I scribbled it on a napkin. So, I'm going to sort of explain how I figured that out. And to do that, I've got to go into the chakra huddles. This is a chakra banner here, and these are the petals going around the chakras, and these petals are what give the chakra its nuance. It's like it gives it its flavor, okay? And these, these petals are actually a uh, frequency for <coughs> each uh, joint and sense organ in the body. It's um, <coughs> the chakra system is actually a transducer system that uh, was put into us so that we could bring cosmic energy. We're really high uh, spiritual beings, uh, light beings, so that we could actually bring cosmic energy through us, sort of like an antenna system or a transducer system, step it down so that the earth can use it, so that the earth can uh, benefit from the solar energy. See, and, and we volunteered here as a species to actually come to do that. We've totally lost track of that. 